Thank you for joining us, my friends. We are live here on the radio, and we're simulcasting the balance of the broadcast at PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, coming up uh, at uh, 1 o'clock Central Standard Time today, Peter Schiff will be joining us. He is, of course, an author, businessman, financial commentator, economic advisor to Ron Paul's 2008 presidential campaign and 2010 candidate for the United States Senate. He will be joining us coming up in the last hour uh, today, and we're also going to be opening the phones up uh, when he joins us. I specifically want to open the phones up for listeners to talk about the economy, to give me your take on the fact that they are now admitting that Marines are helping run checkpoints all over California, but the mainstream media is spinning it, saying it's for training overseas. When we have their actual press releases that it is for domestic operations, it is completely illegal. Also, there's a Senate bill would make airport body scanners mandatory federal law so that you couldn't refuse these. They now admit, it, depending on the scanner type, 20 to 50 times the cancer risk they had previously said, and they are recording your naked body. Uh, also, uh, it made big national news on the Drudge Report, and quite a few newspapers picked up and reported over the weekend on my little five-and-a-half-minute video about LeBron James and the fact that people are obsessed with issues of little or no significance. I have an article I want to read that Paul Watson wrote about that uh, today, dealing with uh, the brainwashing uh, that's going on and how the mainstream media tries to set the agenda uh, to be issues of little or no uh, significance so that the public uh, fills their mind with mindless fluff instead of actually being involved in real issues. Uh, Chicago has now passed their new law. It says if you take five hours of training and the government decides you can have a firearms permit, uh, you can jump through all these hoops and pay a fee and basically take psychological testing as part of the five hours. And then if they decide you can have the privilege, then you can have a gun locked up in your house but can't even have it on your porch or take it outside your home. And now nationally, this is what the Supreme Court is saying our Second Amendment means. A highly restricted privilege. That's the same way they basically went from guns being completely legal in New York in the last 60 years to being completely illegal in New York City. Oh, you, there's still a route to get a concealed permit or a gun license in New York, uh, but very few are able to get it. Uh, so we'll also be uh, discussing uh, that key issue. And we're also seeing a big push for the carbon tax uh, once again. In fact, there's a Stan Cox article in the Washington Post today. In the heat wave, the case against air conditioning. And they go on to say that the 100-plus degree weather must be global warming when the East Coast routinely uh, goes above 100 degrees. And then they continued to say that uh, we need to ban air conditioners. And I see articles in the New York Times last week calling for a one-child policy here in the United States. In fact, the BBC is reporting global population study launched by Royal Society calling for a global population reduction to stop the carbon that humans exhale. And here's another one. Uh, UN World Population Day 2010, Beijing announces measures to stop unauthorized births including forced abortion and accelerated uh, infanticide. Uh, so we're going to be uh, breaking that down as well today. The toll-free number to join us on air is 1-800-259-9231, 1-800-259-9231 to discuss any uh, of these issues. I also want to get into what's happening with the states uh, look at this Fox News headline. Struggling states seek more aid from Washington. And it says governors hamstrung by the sluggish economy rebound in their states, <laughs> sluggish rebound, uh, are bound to balance their own budgets, are passing and pressing anew for Washington to step up more help. Some say it means adding to the nation's red ink. You got to love that. The states are where the tax money comes from. The feds take it, give most of it to the offshore banks that have bought off the federal government, and then send a little bit of money back with strings attached. And I see all these newscasts with locals from all over the country saying, we need the army on the streets of Schenectady, New York. You know, We need them to carry out police work. We need martial law in Schenectady. We need martial law in Illinois. We need martial law in Iowa. The feds have got all the free money. I mean... 
They're not having mayors suddenly all over the country. Every week I see another mayor calling for, quote, martial law. They're even using that term. I saw one of the city council members last year uh, in Milwaukee call for martial law. They're just, that'll fix it. Let's just have troops. And all over the country, mayors say, there's now a daytime curfew. We're going to be searching cars citywide and asking why you're out at 12 noon in Arkansas and Oklahoma. And it just it, it, and we need to inspect your home gardens to make sure you're not growing marijuana. You're guilty until proven innocent. We know what authoritarianism is. We know what it looks like. It's here. And the states are saying, oh, feds, please give us money. Meanwhile, the illegal aliens, especially in the southwestern states, are, are the main deciding factor bankrupting state budgets. The free health care, the free births of babies, the jail and prison populations uh, in many cities in the southwest are over half illegal alien. Uh, but God forbid we actually stem the tide of illegals pouring in, predominantly from Latin America that's in its own depression. I mean, it's worse than a depression in Mexico. No, no, no. We need to have more red ink and raise taxes even more when that only further stalls the economy, which then again bankrupts the states to a greater extent. And then the feds themselves, globalized, they come in and take over the states, and their answer is Marines and Army and police at checkpoints. Uh, here's the headline. New York National Guard involved in mass arrest of U.S. citizens. I'm going to play a clip of this in the next hour. Here's another one. Fox News. This is out on Sunday. Uh, yesterday, July 11th. Fighting gangsters. L.A. police teach Marines tactics to take down Taliban, train Afghan police. But I actually have the police press releases here. They admit in these press releases that they're actually arresting people. This is real. This is illegal. This is tyranny. This is so incredible. And I kept telling you this was coming. And they're just rolling it out now everywhere. But we can't have troops on the border. Oh, Marines can set up checkpoints and search citizens all over the country. But God forbid if you pull over a drunk driver and then they're an illegal alien, whether they be from Russia or Mexico or wherever else, you're not allowed to arrest them. You're not allowed to even ask for their ID. If they don't have an ID, you're supposed to let them go. This is a sick joke. Oh, yes, the government are a bunch of civil libertarians. They care so much about the illegal aliens' rights. Nobody's violating their rights. Here it is. Cops show Marines how to take on Taliban. But then you actually read what they're doing. This is a PSYOP. And, of course, here's our article uh, from years ago. Marine presence confirmed. Again, there we are two years ago covering it. And now here it is. In Fox News and NBC LA two years later. Or a year and a half later, I guess. December 2008 is a year and a half. And the crazy thing is, Steve Watson and Paul Watson wrote this article, New York National Guard involved in mass arrest of U.S. citizens. And... Somebody made a YouTube video about this. We haven't made one. And I just happened, I happened across it and saw the comments that were clearly psyops going, Alex is a liar. You know, the National Guard uh, isn't out there doing gun confiscation. Why, they assisted in 2,000 drug arrest in this one area of New York State. And then you go watch part one and part two of the newscast. They admit they're doing gun arrest, gun sweeps. Mayors are calling for martial law in those cities like Schenectady. And they did help arrest 2,000 people. That's the headline. And they're going after guns as well as part of that. But, but people are in denial. You know, these same people would deny that the military was already being used in law enforcement activities a few years ago. Now that it's all admitted in mainstream news, they say, okay, that's fine, but Alex, you're a liar. What am I lying about? What have we been wrong about? We told you derivatives 11 years ago would cause the country to go bankrupt by design. Now it's all admitted. We told you they lied about WMDs in Iraq. Now it's admitted. We told you that the CIA was protecting the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and growing the opium. Now it's admitted. I mean, what else do you have to see come true that we discuss? I know what I'm talking about. You can know what you're talking about. You can become just as informed as I am if you'll actually start researching history and how the Pentagon has taken over countless nations. 
What's the number one danger in history, whether it was Rome 2,000 years ago or Babylon 2,500 years ago? What was the greatest threat uh, in Alexander the Great's time? His father, 